Dr. Adrian Newey is Formula One's undisputed king when it comes to car design. He's the only designer in F1 history to win the constructors title with three different teams. Williams between 1992 and 1997, four titles on the trot with Red Bull from 2010 to 2013, and the third team he won it with was McLaren. But with McLaren, he won just the one title in 1998, which, you know, considering McLaren was at the pointy end of the field a lot and was always tipped to fight for the constructors, if not get the double, is mad. Because this is the best F1 designer in the world and of all time, right? So with that in mind, let's take a look at Nui's unraced death trap. And there's your clickbait title. So in 2002, as you might have seen if you're old enough, and I actually know somebody that was born in 2002, which is... You know, just mad in itself, Ferrari swept through the you know the season and they won it easily because they had the best car. I mean that's how it works, isn't it? Basically, Schumacher went on to smash records left, right, and center. And then for 2003, Williams and McLaren said that ain't happening again. So they set about designing a 2003 car that would knock Ferrari off their perch. Williams came up with the FW25, and McLaren designed between the brains of Nui, Mike Coughlin, and Neil Oatley the MP4 18. Well, MP4 18 or MP4 18, it's somebody's going to get upset that I've got it the wrong way around. The way the car was designed was not going to be an MP4 17 with some upgrades as the cars were at that time. I think it was the 2022 regulations video I showed you a bunch of Ferraris all lined up and how they were basically evolutions of what came before until about 2007 or so when they completely changed their design philosophy. McLaren decided they were going to build a size zero car, something that was packaged so tightly it was aerodynamically efficient and that also save a bit on weight. Now one of the things they did to the car was change the nose so it drooped lower and made the side pods very, very small or as small as they could possibly do and then integrated a blown diffuser to boot which is something that was trialled on the Benetton B194 back in the 1994 season and just as a, an aside it's thought that the noise that blown diffuser was making is what Senna mistook to be traction control. If you watch Formula 1 around the 2011 season or we can just bring up some footage on YouTube they made a really distinctive fart noise as they came off throttle and the exhaust gases blew over the rear diffuser. But when the car hit the track it was overheating far too easily and the balance was all over the shop and McLaren had actually said that the plan was to develop the car over the first couple of races and then introduce it at around round three or so which is what Ferrari had been doing for you know, most of that era and it's a totally unheard of practice today. Basically according to Mark Priestley what they would do is do pre-season testing with the previous year's car with the current year's rear end. So in this case it would be the 2002 car with the rear end of the 2003 car. Again, something they just won't do today, especially now with the budget caps. In pre-season testing, the MP417D attracted so much attention that even Michael Schumacher went, bloody hell, we might not win this year. And then at the opening round in Australia, David Coulthard took the first win of the season. Then moving on into Malaysia, it was Raikkonen who picked up his first ever win in Formula 1, and it could have been two in a row at Brazil, but it was that race where Giancarlo Fisichella won six days after the race had finished. But behind the scenes it wasn't so rosy with the new car. Like I said it was overheating, the balance was off and even Alex Wurtz who was testing it at the time stacked it heavily. Then after the Brazilian Grand Prix the car's status was declared delayed and then after Imola Ron Dennis gave the cryptic statement of no sooner than Canada and no later than Silverstone. Despite having said in Brazil, the car would be ready somewhere around the late April of 2003. After San Marino, it was the Spanish Grand Prix and Ferrari had brought the F2003-GA, GA being a tribute to the recently deceased head of Fiat, Gianni Agnelli. The 2003 in the hands of Schumacher immediately impressed and won the Spanish Grand Prix at Barcelona and then the Austrian Grand Prix at what was then called the A1 ring before finishing third in Monaco. He then won again in Canada before results teetered off a bit. Something to do with Michelin tyres, a controversy that might be worth a look later on. Meanwhile over at McLaren, Raikkonen had managed to finish second at Imola but retired in Barcelona but then returned with a second again in Austria and Monaco still using the MP417D. But on the test track and at the factory, McLaren had moved the exhaust on the 18 to try and improve the airflow at the rear while still making sure they got some of that blown diffuser magic. Ferrari, meanwhile, was using some sort of scoop to produce rear downforce, but I'd love to show you that, but there just are no pictures that I can use. 
Anyway, McLaren was feeling pressure to rush through the MP4-18 to try and avoid missing out to Ferrari, but Nui seemed unconcerned, just trying to get on with things. The rear end was so tightly packaged and got so hot, mechanics had to be on standby with fire extinguishers, just in case. And if the car didn't come back into the pits on fire, they would had a good run. Then Wurtz and Raikkonen crashed it. Verse for the second time, and McLaren said it was driver error to the motorsport magazines and the motorsport press. Verts hated the car. Coulthard hated the car. And Raikkonen was not happy that the crash was blamed on his inability to drive. So much so that he refused to drive the car again. Now for this video, I have actually opened up this book, How to Build a Car by Adrian Newey. And in this book, he said the main problem was due to how the side pods were designed and the way they were designed in such a way that the car was losing downforce. The only way to solve that problem was to redesign the whole car. Now normally when I put quotes in these videos, I quote them verbatim, like straight from the book or straight from the website or straight from the newspaper, wherever it's come from. But I've had to simplify that because well, I've got absolutely no clue what Adrian's talking about. I've got an audio engineering degree. I don't know what any of this, any of this vortex sandwich means. And since we were past the Canadian Grand Prix and heading towards Silverstone, there was no point in carrying on developing the car. There was also the point to consider here that the car had failed the FIA crash tests twice and the suspension was basically made out of paper and far too fragile. It's thought that it was suspension failure that resulted in the smashes for Wurtz and Raikkonen, but there's not a lot of info on that. But what McLaren learned from the MP4-18, they took to the MP4-19 for 2004, the second season in the 2000s where Schumacher ran unopposed to the finish line in most races. But the MP4-19 was... Well, it was identical to the 18. Ron Dennis said that it wasn't, but Nui in the book says that it was. And it had a lot of the same reliability issues with Nui saying that this is not what he wanted to do. He wanted to take the 18 and rebuild it with what worked on that as well as what worked on the 17D that they were able to you know, extract more performance out of. But that's not the way it went. And since McLaren finished fifth in the constructors that year, he was right. The car really was Chanel Twain. And Jensen Button was third that year in a BAR, if you remember, but McLaren did finish with 69 points. Nice. But also behind the scenes, the writing was on the wall for the relationship between Nui and McLaren. In 2005, David Coulthard switched to the newly formed Red Bull Racing, and as Red Bull had dreams of one day winning the championship, both constructors and drivers, Coulthard managed to convince the higher-ups at Red Bull to hire Nui as their lead designer. Five years later, dominance. And since Nui's departure, McLaren has only won one championship, the drivers, in 2008. Maybe with the 2022 regulations, we might see them fighting for wins more often, but we may need to wait a few months to see if that is indeed the case. And these days, we do see very tiny side pods, by Formula One standards, that is. We do see narrow noses, and we see rear ends tightly packed to make the cars as slippery as possible in a straight line. And Mercedes managed to perfect the tiny side pod design early on in the hybrid era because of the way they designed the intercoolers and the turbochargers in relation to the ICE. And all of that started with a car that never turned up to a competitive race. But if you do want more information on how Adrian Newey's brain works, get this book. Get this book, How to Build a Racing Car. It's a mind blower with some of the technical language, but if you want interesting, there's there's nothing like it. And I've only read a few pages. I mean, the leading Formula One designer of his generation. Yeah, I'd say that. The most accomplished man in the world's most glamorous sport, the Michelangelo of motorsport. Yeah, I, 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 I'd say that as well. The Jedi Master. The Jedi Master of uh, motorsport. How to build an RB5. Good car, that was. Massive thanks as ever go out to the good folk of Patreon for their continued support and if you want to do support me on a more personal level that helps pay for image use because I'm usually using Creative Commons stuff but sometimes I will have to pay for images to be used in the videos because of, you know, there just might not be Creative Commons images out there. Like in this video for instance, that helps all go towards that but it also goes to help pay for computer upgrades and software and things like that to make these videos as good as they can be. So if you do want to support the channel, Link is in the description, along with directions to my social media and also to Discord. So until next time, I've been Adam Ward. Have a cracking day wherever you live in the world, and I'll see you all again soon for another video. So until then, goodbye.